Hi my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today we are in Inkscape and I'm going to show you how you can create shadow offset layers on text and images so that you can bring them into design space and then you can create a shadow cake topper. We're going to start with text first, so I'm just going to get my text icon. And if you come up here, you can of course go through your fonts and of course you can change to the font that you want. Now the important thing to remember in Inkscape that you need to be working within this rectangle. You can of course work outside of it, but when it comes to actually exporting your designs, everything must be within this rectangle. Now you can zoom in if you go to this solid arrow here and then view you can of course zoom in and out. So I'm just going to click there to add my text. And again, if I click on this solid arrow, it will then give me lines around the box. And you can see I've got all these arrows. Now if I hold down my control key on my keyboard, when I enlarge this, it will keep it all in proportion for me. So that's control, and then click one of the arrows and it will keep it in proportion. I can of course make everything larger or smaller when I bring it into design space as well. So don't think that it's all got to be the perfect size in Inkscape. It hasn't. You can of course size it up when you bring it into design space. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to path and I'm going to object to path and then I'm going to go object and ungroup and when I ungroup you'll see each of the letters ends up with a square around them. So with my P I just want to move it closer so I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard just to bring it in a little bit closer. I can then draw around everything and then it'll bring back those highlighted squares again and I'm going to go path and union. And union is very much like design space weld. And if you're ever unsure if a step has gone through, if you go to edit, it will tell you the last step you made where it says undo. So undo union. So I know that union has happened. Inkscape is a free to use program. You can't really grumble, it's free. But I find it personally very, very temperamental. And so if I'm ever unsure if a step has actually done as I want it to, I go to edit and I just check the undo. We're then going to go to path and linked offset. You'll see when you select linked offset that you end up with a broken line box going all the way around and somewhere will be a little diamond. The first thing I want to do is change the colour. So we're just going to go with a bright pink. And then I'm going to hold my control key down and it's usually zero on your keyboard. So it's closed round brackets. And if I click control and zero, I can then increase that offset equally. And it's normally nine on your keyboard. If I hit control and open rounded brackets, I can reduce the offset. So let's go with there. If I select my black text, I'm just going to move that down. Now I've got two choices with this. I can either leave it as it is and go straight to path union, which again will weld it. Or if I want this to be solid, I can go to path, break apart, and then path union. And that will give me that solid background. For this one, I actually want those pieces missing. So all I'm going to do is path and union. Once you've done union, you can then create the next layer of offset. So I'm going to go path, link to offset. That diamond appears and this time I'm going to choose a blue. And again, I'm going to hold my control key down and it's normally zero, but I'm going to select the curved close bracket to increase. And equally, if I want to decrease, it's normally nine, but it's a curved 
open bracket. So let's go with that one. Again, if I select the pink layer, I can move that down. And again, I've got another choice to make. Do I want those to be cut out or do I want them to be solid? I think in this case, we're going to go for solid. So I'm going to go path, break apart, and then path, union. We'll do one more offset. So let's go path, linked offset. Again, the diamond will appear. Let's go for an orange this time. And we're going to do control and normally it's zero or it's a rounded closed bracket. And I think one more. So let's go there. If we move that blue layer down and then with our orange layer, all we're going to do is path union. And there we go. That is nice and easy. So let's do a number because you can do more than one thing in here. So let's go to text again and we'll choose a different font this time. So that one was all Alyssa. So let's go with, let's do an Amelia. So again, click anywhere there and we're going to do the number three. If I click on that solid cursor, I've then got my arrows going round, so I'm going to hold my control down and then I'm just going to drag it out to make it larger. Now I find, I don't need to obviously ungroup this, but I find in Inkscape if I don't ungroup, it won't let me union, so I always have to do it. So I'm going to go path, object to path, then object, ungroup, and then path union. Once I've done that, I can go to linked offset. That diamond will appear. Again, let's go with a pink. We're gonna hold down the control key and then it's a closed rounded bracket, which as I say, is normally a zero on your keyboard. Now this time, because I haven't got anything to break apart, I can leave it all exactly where it is because at the moment, the pink is obviously selected. So I can do my next steps without affecting the black, but keeping it where it is. If both were selected, there would be two boxes there. There's only one box and the box is around the pink layer. So I'm simply going to go path, union. And then I'm going to go path, linked offset. My diamond will appear. So let's go for a blue and then hold our control key down and it's close rounded bracket. Again, it's just that blue layer selected. So I'm going to go path union and then path linked offset. That diamond appears, we can get the orange and then control and closed rounded brackets. Now, if you look at that one, we've then got a cutout there and it's completely your choice if you keep it there or not. But if you want to close that up, you can and you can do it without moving all of these. So all I'm going to do is just make sure that orange layer is selected, which it is. I'm then going to go path, break apart and path union. I'm just going to draw around all of them just to make sure they are selected. And of course you want to make sure that they are within the parameters of this rectangle. I'm going to go file, save as. It should automatically want to save in your pictures. We're going to give it a name. And it'll automatically say save as Inkscape SVG and we can then save that. So next we're going to do an image. So if I go to file and open, I'm going to get a PNG. I find working with PNGs in Inkscape so much easier than SVGs and JPEGs. I will show you a JPEG, but preferably if you can, PNG is just gonna make your life so much easier. And for those of you that don't know, JPEG is a flat 
picture. So a flat image with a white background or a black background or whatever the picture has been taken of. PNG is also a flat image, but the background has been removed. So there's no background color. And then you've got SVG, which as we know is a multi-layered image. So I got these uh, pandas from a design space bundle and I will link to it in the description below. So let's go with that little fella and we can open. And I don't need to change any of that. I'm just going to select OK. Now it normally will come in and fill the entire space of that rectangle. So exactly the same as before, just click on it. And then at one of those arrows, hold your control key down. And then you can make it a little bit smaller or bigger. And then I use my arrow key just to bring it into the center of that rectangle. Exactly the same as before, we're going to go path, object to path. And then we're going to go path, trace, bitmap. Now with a PNG, this is nice and easy. So it will come up like this and you've got the brightness threshold. So I go all the way up to one and then I just go one down. So 0 0.990. You can also select update to see what it's going to look like. And then you can select OK. You end up with two pictures. You've got your one you've just traced, which is the black and white one. And then you've got your colored one. Now you can leave your colored one in here, but when you save it and you then bring it into design space, it will not bring this in. So you will have to bring the PNG image in separately, but all of your traced and your offsets will go in. So you might as well just get rid of that because there's no point keeping it in there. Now we want the outline of this because obviously with the PNG as a print and cut, it's going to cut out the outline. So there's no point us keeping all these details because the print and cut is just going to be the outline of the image anyway. So we're going to go path and break apart and then path union. And that will give us that solid background. We can then go path, linked offset. That diamond will appear. Let's go again, let's just do pink and then control and close rounded brackets, which as I say is normally zero. And let's go with that one. Now, if I look at this one, I've got the same choices before. I can either do break apart and make that solid or just do union and leave it as it is. I think I'll just do break apart. So I'm going to go path, break apart, and then path, union, and then path, linked offset. I can change the color. And then we're going to go control and it's a closed rounded bracket, which as I say is normally zero. That blue layer is selected. So all I'm going to do is path union and then path linked offset. We can choose the color and then control rounded closed brackets then path and union. And then exactly the same as before, file, save as, and let's do panda image offset, and then save. So now we're going to look at JPEG images and I've just got a free clip art off the internet. So file, open, you can see it's a JPEG file, so we're going to open that up. Again, it fills that whole rectangle. So if I just hold my control key down, 
with one of the arrows I can then reduce the size and keep it all in proportion. I'm then going to go path, object to path and I'm going to go path, trace bitmap. So exactly the same as before, I'm going to increase that brightness threshold all the way up to one and then reduce it by one click to 0 0.990. Now if I do update, you'll see that is super, super fuzzy. So I'm going to click on multiple scans and I'm going to select smooth and remove background. And quite often when I update, when I come to multiple scans, it won't let me see the update. But that's all I'm going to change and then I'm going to go OK. So if I just move that one out the way, this is what we've then got. So we're going to highlight it and first of all we're going to go Object, Ungroup. And I always like to draw around it again just to make sure I'm catching everything. And then we're going to go Path, Break Apart. And you'll see we end up with lots and lots of boxes. And again, I am going to draw around it to make sure that I get everything I need to. I'm then going to go Path, Union. That then gives me that solid background. And you'll also see the background is removed as well. So I'm just going to delete that one because, again, we're going to have to bring it in to Design Space separately. So because I've unioned and done all of that, I can now go Path, Linked Offset. It's going to bring that diamond in. I can change the colour and then Control and Close Rounded Bracket. There's nothing to break apart there, so I'm just going to go Path, Union, and then Path, Linked Offset. My diamond will come so I can change the colour. Control, and then Close Rounded Brackets. And then I just like to draw around and make sure I'm getting all four layers. And I can do as many offsets as I like. Exactly the same as before. File, Save As. Let's do Panda JPEG Offset and save. I can then close Inkscape down. So we're in Design Space, so let's go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. So we're going to bring in this PNG first, so open. It's a PNG, so we're going to select it as a complex image continue. We don't need to remove the background, it's already done for us, so continue. Now I thought when it brought it in this would all be solid but it's not, which means Design Space will try and cut that and I would not want that anyway. So I'll show you what I would do with that in a second, but let's bring that in as a print and cut. We can browse for the next one, so let's do the Panda Offset. We don't need to change anything because we've brought it in as an SVG, but you can change the name and give it a tag and then save. So we've got our two pieces. Now don't forget, our black layer is the outline of this. So they're the same size. The black layer is not an offset. It's the pink and the blue and the orange that are the offset. So if I ungroup that, once it's ungrouped, I can then get this. Now this is a width of 5.229. So if I change this one to a width of 5.229, they'll be the same because this was a direct copy of the coloured picture. So I'm then going to change the colour of that to white and I'm going to arrange and send it to back and then I'm going to highlight both of them align and center and then I'm going to flatten the picture to that white background so rather than come in and try and cut all those spokes it's literally going to cut out the outline for us. So if we bring this over 
That is what we're then going to end up with. So we've got three cut layers and then we've got our print and cut layer. So we're going to upload the text next. So let's go to browse. We've got our text there so we can open. Again, it's an SVG. So all we need to do is give it a name and a tag and then save. We can then insert that to our canvas. Now you will need to ungroup it if you've done several areas together, but what you can then do is regroup. So for example, the three, I can either draw around it or what I can do is click on my layers panel and hold my control key down and then select the layers that way. And then I'm just going to regroup my three and then I can regroup my panda. And lastly, we're going to upload the JPEG and that offset. So again, upload, upload image, browse. We'll bring in the PNG, we'll bring in the offset first. It's a SVG, so I can change the image name and the tag and then save. This time I need to bring in the JPEG of that panda. I want it to be a complex image because it is a print and cut. And I just need to remove that background so I can just click where I want it to remove. I'm then going to go to continue and save as a print and cut and I can give it a name and a tag. So exactly the same as before that gray layer is our panda. So it's going to be the exact outline. It's not an F offset. It is actually the panda. So if I ungroup it, and I can either get rid of it or I can flatten my panda to it. But in this case, I don't need to. All I need to do is just get the size right. So that is 3.848 in width. So I'll make this one 3.848 in width. Arrange and send it to front. And if I bring it over, it will sit directly on there and I can then, as I say, either flatten to that gray layer or just simply delete it. So then I've got my three offset layers to cut and my print and cut. And we're just going to group that together. So let's say I wanted this to be a cake topper. All I need to do is just sort out those back layers. So if I ungroup this one, and when you ungroup it, it'll always take it to the front. So if I hide everything but the orange layer, the same with this one, ungroup, and it'll take it right to the top of our layers panel, and I can hide everything but the orange layer. Same with that one, ungroup it, hide everything but the orange layer, and this one, ungroup, and then hide everything but the orange layer. That will give me my base of my cake topper. So I can then weld that all together. And if I wanted those to stay as cutouts, I can, or I could go to my contour and simply contour them out. It's your choice, there's no right or wrong. If I then arrange and center back, I can start bringing back my other layers. And then of course I can group it and size it and then I can do my two print and cuts. My orange, blue and pink layers I would most likely do in a cardstock and then my panda and my three I would possibly do in vinyl or I might do it in cardstock and individually place the P. It's completely up to you. But that's how you create the offset and that's how you can create an offset layered cake topper. Please do subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget in our group UK Cricut Creators on Facebook, you don't have to be living in the UK, but you do have to love your cricket. We are doing monthly events every month on Zoom. They're free to attend. 
we put up the month before the schedule, we put up what we're going to make and we put up what you're going to need and you then book a space, as I say it's free, you come and join us, we do normally two to three hours an event, they're fantastic, they're in the safety of your craft room, you can sit and chat with other crafters, you can learn something and we can all learn from each other. So come and join us on those because they are brilliant. Come and join me for the next video which will be up tomorrow and that is going to be a shaker card topper and again we'll be using Offset in Inkscape for that as well. As always thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!